What if I told you that French water mills never flood? Well, on January the 6th, I would be wrong. Over two meters of water tried hard to encroach our living space. The Dordogne River burst its banks and rushed into our garden. Luckily, the mill stayed dry. But, our 1943 Bernard water pump didn't do so well. Too heavy to move, I optimistically left it in the garden, where it happily lives most of the time. There's no oil in it, it's just full of water. It is a real workhorse, running strong and a vital part of our garden irrigation. Follow me as we move, test, dismantle and rebuild this sadly wet but timeless classic engine. My first job is to assess the damage. The engine was totally submerged, so I'm assuming that the crankcase is full of water. Every minute I leave it, rust will eat away at the internal parts. It's vital to move the wet engine into the dry workshop and drain out the water. Well, time to uh, dismantle the engine. I think what I'm going to do, this is the centrifugal pump part. Water goes in here, impeller, goes out here and then it's joined on to the um, engine here. The thing is the whole th engine is very heavy so I'm going to try and take it apart. I'm going to take the pump off the front. This is the uh, coupler with the rubber inserts and I'm going to move this over here. I'm sure that the engine bolts have not been removed for many years. So a combination of WD-40, heat and brute force might just work. Ta-da! Four bolts out! I am so pleased. Right. Whoa! Uh,
find it up here. <laughs> Weighs 100 pounds. How am I going to do this without killing myself? Using brute force and stupidity, <sighs> I got it on the workbench. Hey! Engine. Workshop. Workbench. <laughs> everywhere dipstick sumps completely filled with water this is the sump drain let's drain it see what comes out water <laughs> Lots of water. Clean water. thought that was like 10 pints of water and oil in there. Oh, disgusting. And it keeps coming. day and time to test the engine. The first thing learning from my wonderful mentor Musty One is to check if there's a spark. So the spark plug has been disconnected from the cylinder, put it in the spark plug um, wire and then ground the plug and then get my trusty piece of string pull over the engine and, and look at the uh, spark plug gap and see if there's a, a spark absolutely no spark this is the uh, contact rater points they're new and clean condenser cable from the uh, magneto and then this is the main Spark plug wire. Spark plug is uh, kind of clean. Maybe clean it up a bit again. See if that helps. So, piece of emery cloth between the uh, electrode and the body case. And just get it nice and clean. So. That's a good clean spark plug. Again, ground the body of the spark plug. Wind up the engine and nothing. This is not good news. No spark, no engine run. I'm stumped. Time to reconsider my options. If I can't fix it, I need to find somebody who can. So I placed an advert in the local paper and found Les, a retired Navy engineer. 
Les confirmed there was no spark and started by adjusting the ignition timing. He told me this wonderful tip. Instead of a feeler gauge, a cigarette packet can work. The cardboard is ideal for checking plug gap, And a piece of cigarette paper is just the thing for adjusting the points gap to the correct size. I need to check, I had a mini. You yes. remember that? Yeah. And I remember, I thought, oh, I'll try that. I'll do the same. And I went like this. I leaned on the car. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, bang! Did <laughs> <laughs> I let go of the bloody thing? Yeah. I'm going to leave the engine with Les and come back and see how he's got on. One happy Les, one happy Simon, and one happy engine. What Les found was the engine still was full of water. A wire had broken from the magneto to the point and it had the wrong type of spark plug. Now it's running great. 